Well, um, hello again. I'm Hernan from Wikimedia Colombia, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Wikimedia Education Program Adapting to a Peacebuilding Context in Colombia. So, what is a peacebuilding context? It's a transition scenario. In November 2016, the Colombian government signed a peace agreement with the FARC guerrillas, the oldest guerrilla in the continent, that after 56 years of war left uh, very uh, deeply damaging impacts in, in the context. More than 7 million displaced foremen, which means families had to run from their homes. More than 16,000 children recruited. And this means a lot of uh, struggles for the educational context. So there are national challenges after this war in this post-conflict scenario. And of course, the strate strategic plan of Wikimedia Foundation in Colombia uh, wanted to uh, advise the social and digital breaches because three out of 10 persons in scholar ages didn't go to school between 19 and 21, even though it's mandatory. There's still the myths and taboos about the uses of Wikipedia and of course the resources appropriation, digital tools and methodologies require enlarging our network. But we wanted to focus a little more to understand how to connect a peace building approach into this uh, program. So we started asking ourselves, which, which peace are we talking about? There is this official peace that was signed by the government with the guerrillas that built an infrastructure that needs to implement these accords. So we want to approach this official peace building infrastructure and strengthen it through the tools that we have in the Wikimedia ecosystem. But also there were uh, territories where this uh, official peace didn't uh, arrive. Uh, and this is the everyday peace building we're talking here. This is the people that day by day struggle with the troubles and are the experts in experience that need to uh, dialogue with the exper experts in experimentation, which could be us as mediators of these platforms. Because when this official peace doesn't arrive to the territories, no one crosses hands. There's still this optimism and this uh, volunteer to, for, to to work, you know, towards uh, like better conditions and dignified life. So Wikimedia Colombia wants to walk side by side with this community. So the two approaches, the official piece and the everyday piece have to uh, be part of our program. And, and we wanted to do it through three approaches that we, we resume here. The do no harm approach. So every time we do an activity, we want to left installed capacities in, in, in these uh, communities. The gender approach, uh, diminishing the breaches between uh, gender representation and in the educational context, and what it's called the affective action research, which actually is our goal in research is not to create papers, but to promote the creation of learning communities. And uh, this could incise positively in the structural violences, uh, a positive impact through access to information and tools to give voice to these people that have been historically excluded from the knowledge production circuits. So that's it. We invite you to uh, uh, follow us in this dream of, of using the Wikimedia ecosystem towards uh, a peace building. Thank you. Gorana? Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Gorana Gomirac. I'm GLA manager at Wikimedia Serbia, but also a license for uh, CE region in Let's Connect program. So uh, today I will tell you a little bit more about the program. I was supposed to have this session with Justice from Ghana, our dear colleague, but unfortunately he was not able to come. So big kudos to, to him and to the rest of the Let's Connect team. So let's go. So what is Let's Connect? Let's Connect is a peer learning program that was founded by Wikimedia Foundation last year. It is supported by Wikimedia Foundation and it is led by community, which I will explain later. So um, basically this is a safe space for all of us to learn, to share experience, to share knowledge, to just communicate, to connect, to learn from each other. So um, this is like an online space where we can ask questions, talk about mistakes we made, because I think uh, making mistakes 
is a very good way actually to learn. So why not learning from others' mistakes? So yeah, uh, this is a very safe space for learning. And purpose is to develop skills in various, um, various fields. So uh, what I said, it's community-led and foundation-supported. Um, members of staff of Wikimedia Foundation are members of Let's Connect working groups, but uh, community all around the world, as you can see, um, the dot um, next to CU region, but we have people, our team members from all around the world, which is very important because we can see different perspective. Uh, we can see like some activities that are led differently in different parts of the world and we can really learn how to implement something in maybe our region or how to um, maybe improve something or share our thoughts and our experiences. So uh, we have uh, like we, we can take a look at, my, uh, at our colleagues and uh, members of Let's Connect working group. So how does it work, actually? Uh, we have three ways of organizing activities. Uh, first of all, we have learning clinics, which is very important. And this is like an um, hour and a half or two hour long learning session. Uh, it is organized uh, around different topics. So we are really trying to cover what is important, what is uh, interesting maybe at the moment for communities all around the world. Um, it uh, takes um, experienced Wikimedians or experts to share their experience around some topic. And uh, we are organizing like panel discussions, workshops, breakout rooms on Zoom, and people are joining from all around the world. We have regional learning clinics, but uh, most of them are globally uh, organized. We have one-on-one -on -one connections. That means that if there is a need, we are connecting people from all around the world so you can approach us and tell us, for example, we need support in grant proposal and we will connect you with someone who has experience in that and who can help you uh, in um, grant proposing process. So you can always approach us with some need and we will do everything we can to uh, respond to it. Uh, the last one is connection to other spaces. What does it mean? If there is some other learning session or training or workshop and we know about it, we will share it with our community. So you're always aware on what to do uh, and when it is happening and when you can learn about that. So this is, this is the list of some skills you can achieve. But as I said, we are organizing this around various topics. Uh, some of them are, as I said, grant proposal writing, uh, project management, organizational planning, uh, maybe how to join some important Wikimedia competition or activity. So we are really trying to cover um, many topics we can. And if there is a need and we see it, we will organize around that. But if you have anything you would like to talk more about, please let us know. Uh, those are some numbers that we wanted to show around Let's Connect. So for example, we had more than 600 participants uh, in our learning clinics, which is very important. 4.2 is our average uh, score on a scale of one to five of how uh, on uh, how much our participants are satisfied. So we are always trying to learn and to be better. And like the whole point is to make um, like a universal safe space for us to learn. Uh, so uh, today and tomorrow, and you can always approach us with ways on how we can be better, how we can um, and sensitive ad wiki communities to participate to Let's Connect. So as we were all talking throughout this conference, it's very important to share experience, to share knowledge. We can share that even after this conference through Let's Connect. Uh, you can scan this code if you want to register to be part of Let's Connect. You can always write us. You can visit our page on Meta to see uh, more details about that. You have our email, you have my email, so you can always uh, write us to know more about that. And thank you very much. I hope we can connect. Thank you, Gorana.
And now I'll invite Brahim for his session. Yeah, yeah you can, you can, uh, sorry, I just have to refresh this table. <laughs> Okay, you can watch this. <laughs> no, no, if you have. Gogi? But the links are not updated for some reason. Sorry about that. Hi again, uh, I'm Brahim Faraji, um, coordinator of, educator, uh, of education program with the Moroccan Users Group. So uh, the story of reading Wikipedia in the classroom uh, started in uh, 2020, and it was uh, in context of a pilot project with uh, Philippines and Bolivia. And uh, uh, how, it, how it started. Uh, it, w it started with like mathematics or statistics. So imagine all teacher career, they work for 30 or 40 years. So if we can count the number of students that uh, uh, learn uh, for each uh, teacher uh, during 30 years, we can find a thousand of uh, students for each teacher. So our focus uh, or our target was the teacher because the impact uh, of the project will be uh, so big. So yeah, uh, the first challenge, uh, challenge that we had, it was uh, the perception, the negative perception of Wikipedia. So what we did as action, so is talking about Wikipedia through uh, social media, through uh, Facebook groups and uh, WhatsApp groups uh, of teachers. And it, you can imagine all efforts that we had to convince a uh, teacher about using Wikipedia in the classroom. Uh, second thing, it was contacting uh, press media uh, to, uh, uh, to show the value of the movement and the impact of uh, using Wikipedia as a pedagogical tool inside the school. Uh, the second uh, challenge that we had, uh, okay, oops, sorry, oh. that's just uh, uh, an example of uh, many articles was uh, talking about uh, the projects in Morocco. Uh, that's for communication. Uh, second challenge that we had, it was COVID. So COVID, you know, all schools were closed. So people who, or teacher, especially, uh, weren't prepared to use other uh, way to teach. So uh, they don't have any other platform, online platform, uh, to connect with st students. So uh, actually, there was. He, uh, they were using uh, WhatsApp and uh, Facebook to continue teaching, imagine that. So uh, the project was uh, to convince teacher to subscribe or do registration to uh, our training. It was so hard because it was like another effort that teacher should doing in parallel with uh, training uh, through uh, social media. 
So the first edition started with 100 teacher, and we had in the end 27 graduate teacher. But then we did uh, like a study research or evaluation to uh, to see uh, uh, what's wrong, what we can do uh, for uh, the first uh, edition. It was the third uh, challenge. That's the administration uh, process. So to get partnership with uh, schools, you have to go with uh, direction of partnership in Rabat, and that uh, took a lot, a lot of time and effort. Then uh, the action that we had, so looking for uh, another partner, partner. It was uh, an association that called uh, Network of Lecture in Morocco. So it facilitates uh, the, uh, the contact with uh, government, with schools. And why? Because, uh, as you know, the Moroccan user group doesn't have a legal statute in Morocco. So it can have problem to deal with government or administration. So the partnership with uh, this association uh, facilitates uh, communication with uh, with administration and resolve all technical uh, process. So the second edition, we receive uh, 700 uh, registration from teachers. And it was so amazing that we get that result. And as you see, I, as comparison between uh, 20 and 22, and that's uh, we start with 100 and we uh, we go directly to 786 and the first and the second edition the first edition was fully online uh, through Facebook because Facebook is used by all teachers and it was easy to uh, that they can uh, follow up through Facebook the second edition uh, we continue uh, with uh, Facebook, uh, that means online uh, training. But in the end, we tried another uh, thing. It was a boot camp. So uh, we invite uh, 40, uh, 40 teachers, 20 who were already involved in training. And the second 20, uh, they didn't have any idea about the project or Wikipedia. So it was like just experimenting uh, this uh, way of training. Then uh, when those teachers come back to their office, to their, uh, to their schools, they start talking about the experience. OK, one minute. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so the impact uh, that we had after that, we, re we start to receive from many directorate invitation to come and do training for their teachers from all region of Morocco, especially the north. And uh, we didn't expect uh, expected that. And second thing, uh, as you see here, uh, the teacher who were uh, interested by the uh, project was from primary schools. And that was a uh, first surprise for us. In, and second and th uh, third uh, discipline, it was Arabic and Islamic uh, education. Because uh, we didn't expect that, that religion uh, uh, against education. So now <laughs> well, we have that perception that uh, changed or corrected. So uh, that's some training, uh, some indicator. Uh, we can uh, share that and you will find that in the annual uh, report uh, of uh, our user group. We can share that in the end. Uh, for uh, the third edition, we will start it the next uh, week, and we receive uh, 876 uh, demand for the third edition. 
And what is amazing in this uh, edition that we will use EDX platform, uh, WikiLearns. So it's uh, the first time that uh, I think uh, one user group in Arab world uh, will use EDX platform for training, uh, online training. And uh, we cross fingers. Uh, we keep watching uh, this experience and we will share with you uh, the result in the end uh, after that uh, edition uh, will finish. And we faced some challenges for edX with edX platform because uh, coming from English to Arabic, uh, we get uh, some uh, technical issues. Uh, so let's keep praying for uh, that experience, new experience for our user group. So yeah, I think uh, time is uh, over. <laughs> I'm sorry to, but uh, we are here if, uh, if anyone want more information uh, about our experience. Thank you. And now I'll call, call Adamant. Okay, it's okay. Uh, hello again, everyone. My name is Armen Mirzoyan. I'm from Armenia. I'm a former staff member of Wikimedia Armenia, and now I work for uh, HATC, which is the leading investigative journalism portal in uh, our region, in Southern Caucasus. And I just yeah. assumed. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, I want to talk about a project uh, which is about the textual content of Wikipedia, uh, sorry, visual content of Wikipedia. Uh, in these years, uh, Armenian Wikipedia has been one of the dynamically developing Wikipedias in Eastern Europe and uh, Southern Caucasus. For years, a lot of events, trainings, or projects were initiated to improve the textual content of uh, Armenian Wikipedia. Even the number of articles increased because of the translation from other language Wikipedias, especially in Armenian, it is Russian and English. But the visual content of the articles were mainly stayed unimproved. And even uh, when they translated it from Russian or uh, English, they took the uh, visuals from there and they uh, even uh, haven't uh, translated uh, uh, textual content of that uh, visuals. So we're, we were thinking about that enriching uh, Wikipedia with quality visuals may attract uh, people to spend more time in Wikipedia to obtain, contribute, and also share knowledge from there. So the investigative journalist NGO initiated Wikigraphers visualizing open knowledge project with the financial assistance of Wikimedia Foundation Alliance's Fund. And during the implementation of this project, we used learning by doing method. What it means, uh, what and what we did, we uh, announced an open call and we chose 20 participants to participate in this project from many spheres. And uh, we started an educational program. Uh, an eight months long program during which they studied illustrative or visual skills, and then they use that skills for creating visuals for Wikipedia articles based on the information which is in that articles. So that uh, the educational process is consists of, uh, of four main subjects. First of all, it's wiki ideology and wiki editing. Uh, during this course, the participants learn about Wikimedia movement, its values, wiki markup, wiki editing, and everything which is connected with Wiki. The second one is creation of data-driven infographics. You know, there are a lot of data in NET, also in Wikipedia. So the participants, which are both active Wikipedians and new, uh, new participants who do their first steps in Wiki, Wikimedia movement, they started how to find, collect, and also how to filter data from the, uh, from the reliable sources. And after that, how to create infographics for that articles based on the information, based on that data. 
The third one is illustration and animation. Uh, they learn how to create images, uh, graphical images and uh, motion, uh, based also on the information. And the emphasis is placed on the objects which uh, mainly cannot be photographed, such as chemical, ch uh, chemical reactions or physical phenomena, and etc. And the fourth one, uh, oh, I skipped that slide, sorry. And the fourth one is jazz mapping. Uh, they learned uh, how to use QGIS. They put the jazz information in the GIS open source software. And through the help of that software, they created maps for Wikipedia uh, articles. One of the main uh, up, uh, aspects of our project was the connection between newcomers and active Wikipedians. For enriching this part of the projects, we organized, we implemented hackathons, editathons, meetings with them, uh, with the active Wikipedians, and they together uh, started to create articles and visuals for that articles. So uh, this is the main direction of our activities and Wikimedia projects. It is the visualiz visualization of Wikipedia articles and Wikimedia projects at all. And we will continue to work on this direction. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and also, if you have any question about the educational process, about the program, you can just uh, feel free to contact me. Thank you. Thank you, Armin, so much. And I'm going to call <coughs> Rosie to join us. And um, just keep in mind the time, please, um, because we <laughs> you all have to get to the lunch. You can use this one as well. Hi, everybody. I'm Rosie Stevenson Goodnight. And some of you may know me as a prolific editor on English Wikipedia since 2007. Although I wear some other hats, and I'm going to talk today about one of them. My experience as a Wikipedia visiting scholar at Northeastern University, Boston, Massachusetts. The background of how I got involved with that is that a group of people started creating articles about women in the month of March, starting in about 2011. And at the same time, someone created a project called Wiki Project Women's History. The next year, 2012, March, Women's History Month, more people created more biographies about women, and someone created Wiki Project Women Artists. The next year, 2013, same thing, more and more people creating biographies in the month of March, Women's History Month, and Women Sci Wiki Project Women Scientists was created. In 2014, I created Wiki Project Women Writers. It started off with about a thousand articles, mostly biographies, but there were a few articles about women's work. So think like the novels, the, uh, their poems, maybe their essays. In the meantime, the uh, Wiki Education Foundation based in San Francisco, uh, I see Frank there in the back and you have all met Liana now numerous times, um, developed a program called the Wikipedia Visiting Scholar Program where it connects experienced Wikipedians with academic institutions to improve Wikipedia. This is a US or Canada based Wikipedian who wants to be a volunteer, it's not a paid position, no compensation, and they have specific expertise in a particular area, and there's a university who wants to have a Wikipedian who comes in and uses its resources to create articles on Wikipedia. In 20, March 2017, I became one of those Wikipedia visiting scholars. And in particular, it was at Northeastern University in creating and improving Wikipedia articles on pre-20th century women writers and their works and the book trade, and also women in education and women and as readers. You can see the metrics there of how many um, articles I've created or improved. And there's a link um, to the page where I keep track of those statistics. As you might imagine, I also use a dashboard. Here's a click of that. 
I expanded the project in 2019, and what I did is I took the API of a part of Northeastern University's uh, Women's uh, Writers Project called the Women Writers in Review Initiative. The Women Writers in Review uh, Initiative is a collection of 18th and 19th century reviews, publication notices, literary histories, and other texts that you would find in the journals that were available in that day that reviewed the works that women had written. And by that, I'm talking about, again, not just necessarily the, the novels they wrote, the poems they wrote, the essays they wrote, but it might also include something about um, a school that they founded that had a particular emphasis where it was women attended the school and maybe women learned um, more about the writing trade. And it also included things like women as publishers, women as bookbinders, women as booksellers, so broadly construed. 81 authors, 232 works, 138 periodicals, 601 reviews. This is, um, you can see my methodology in that link on Wikidata. It's a work in progress. He's not here today, but I want to give a shout out to, he happens to now be a new trustee, Mike Peel, who helped me with some of this um, Wikidata work bringing in the API. A uh, final word here that my work also includes efforts on Wikimedia Commons. Often I will, um, if I've written the article about this woman, I will search for an image about her. And I've learned how to be a pretty good researcher. I found a, a lot of images of these women and I make sure then that I upload them to Wikimedia Commons, but not just them. Because if I find their photo in a um, periodical and there are other photos of other women, those become fodder for me for the next article that I'm going to write. And I upload their images in Wikimedia Commons too. I've enjoyed sharing with you this information about my Wikipedia visiting scholar position. Um, my, uh, my ability to continue the work has been renewed for another year, so I'm happy about that. And I'd be really happy to know if there's anyone else, either in this audience or who's listening to this recorded session, who's also doing this kind of work at some other institution, so we can maybe learn from each other, um, share some strategies, maybe share some methodology. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosie. And last in this session, but not, but not the least, uh, Mohammed again. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hi again. So now I will be talking about Wikipedia education program in Palestine, my country. I will be talking about the editions, the results, the challenges that we face, and the opportunities that we have. So as you can see, uh, these photos are from the first edition of Wikipedia Education Program in Palestine. It was launched by uh, our, our well-known Wikimedian, Farah Mustaklim, who was like a member of the uh, AFCOM group. And this edition was in 2015. So the first edition of this program was in 2015 in Birzeit University in Ramallah. And these are some photos from the ceremony. This is the group photo of the same ceremony. So after that, I and Farah and you can see at the left, uh, Bara Zamara, she's a well-known editor too. She participated in so many conferences, including Wikimania. So he met us and he suggested us to launch an, a new edition of Wikipedia education program in our cities. So uh, after that, we launched the first edition of Wikipedia education program in Nablus at the Najah National University. So this is from uh, the ceremony and that was in 2018. And this is another edition of the same program that was in 2018 too, in the same university. 
So after that, we extended. Yani we went to Jerusalem University and we uh, launched a new edition of this program there. And as you can see, these are some photos of the ceremony. Farah is always there. So in one of uh, our ceremonies, we had like a word from Jimmy Wells, the founder of Wikipedia, as you can see. That was at an Najah National University in Nablus. So after that, we extended more. And my colleagues, uh, Tala, Bara, Sami, Ala, by the way, Ala, I think some of you know Ala, he was the Wikimedian of the year in 2021. He's Palestinian and he's the Wikimedian of the year in 2021, uh, the one with black uh, t-shirt. And Nadine Kotena, they launched the first edition of this program in their city, which is Hebron. And as you can see, this, is, this photo is from of, uh, one of the ceremonies. They launched six editions so far, and they are, um, they are doing continuous efforts to launch new and new editions in various universities in the same city. All of these photos are in Hebrew. So this is uh, uh, the most uh, well-known Palestinian dessert, which is kunafa, and it's written there Wikimedia, Wikimedia, but in Arabic. So our achievements, uh, in five years, we were able to train uh, more than 800 students. Most of them are university students and they successfully contributed to more than 2,000 articles on the Arabic Wikipedia. Most of them are featured and good articles, and they successfully uploaded more than 3,000 photos for the Palestinian regions on Wikimedia Commons. Uh, we actually face so many challenges in Palestine. Um, the most important one is the lack of a volunteering culture. Um, it's really hard to get more and more and attract more and more uh, participants and recruit new volunteers because we live in an unstable, unstable area. Palestinians um, are suffering from political, uh, social, economic challenges and um, like they have so much important priorities than volunteering in a Wikipedia. Um, also, um, so many active Wikipedians are struggling to maintain their involvement and sustain their contribution to the education programs because they have so much responsibilities and work commitments. And finally, we are suffering from transportation hurdles, like in five or even seven years, we only met twice. And this is because there are so many checkpoints by the occupation between the Palestinian cities. And this is actually uh, co yani costing us too much inspection time. Like if you want to move between too much, two cities, you will uh, at least spend two hours in the inspection time, even if they are too close. Uh, despite all these challenges, we are determined to continue our work in enhancing and promoting and launching new editions of the education program. And we kindly, as, as my colleague Musab said, we kindly ask the foundation to, um, to respond much faster to our grant proposals and help us to find sustainable solutions in order to sustain the editions of Wikipedia education program in Palestine. Thank you so much. you all thank you for your presentations and your lighting talks and now i'll invite you to the lunch uh, you can use the restaurant and uh, you can go back um, uh, at two we are starting our sessions at two <laughs>